Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings as we still have some heavy rain around in places over the next couple of days but higher pressure is building in. Now the high pressure doesn't look as great as it did a few days ago as it has slowly drifted further southwards which is going to allow a lot more cloud and muck and light rain to move in over the northern edge of the higher pressure which might actually mean parts of northern England, northern Ireland and Scotland still see rain and thicker cloud as we do progress through the weekend. But as we head into next week the high pressure doesn't look like it's going to be dominating for all that long with the westerly flow looking likely to break back in but in the lead up to christmas yes the winds look more from a westerly direction but we're going to see more amplification of the jet stream which will mean there will be or at least is looking likely to see northerly incursions i.e cold air dropping out of the arctic for a period of time so there's no massive cold blocks pattern which some uh, models have been suggesting over the past sort of couple of weeks and some weather patterns have been suggesting but definitely is a trend towards a colder pattern with colder spells with northerly shots and the risk of wintriness in and out in and around the christmas period the gfs run today as we'll see in a few minutes time actually does develop some snow in and around the christmas uh, period uh, christmas day and boxing day so it's going to be a very interesting watch over the next few days and next week or so in general to see exactly how it does shape up uh, but yeah uh, definitely look like it's going to be coming a change into the lead up to christmas so do remember if you enjoy my videos which you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description now if you start on the live radar we've got a bit of an array of showers around at the moment it's been a pretty unsettled day as the initial weather front sweep through last night with some really heavy rain in place i was actually woken up to the sound of heavy rain on the windows and earlier today for areas further southwards we have actually seen some heavy thundery showers with lightning strikes detected in and around the london area but for most, it was some really quite torrential, squally rain as this low moved through. Now, a lot of those squally showers are out into Europe now and losing their intensity as the low does slowly fill in. But we're still seeing a few showers stretch across England and Wales and some more persistent rain up towards Scotland, where we have had issues with rainfall. And we've had warnings issued. A bit of snow over the higher ground, but again, not too unusual for this time of year. For most, though, it is mild with rain falling out of the sky. If you have a look at the two-meter temperatures, you can see lots of sort of darker blues and lighter yellows indicating temperatures around the sort of 8 to 10 degree mark. So slightly above average for the time of year, or actually probably a little bit more than slightly above average, simply because, you know, it is getting uh, to, getting later in the evening now. And, you know, we'd expect temperatures to be getting towards the low single digits, but for most, still holding up with that thicker cloud around and generally milder air mass. But it will be changing, chop and change a lot over the coming days and um, potentially as I said into the next week we see more sustained colder spells nothing you know, ridiculous but more towards average or below average in the lead up to Christmas if you look at the latest weather warnings we've still got this rain warning issued for eastern parts of Scotland into northeast England it expires at 8 a.m tomorrow again it's for that heavy rain we just saw on live radar continuing to linger across those areas again in 10 to 20 millimeters in time maybe 30 to 40 millimeters over the course of the whole event and again rainfall is turning lighter now but it is still really quite persistent and will last likely into the morning if you look at the latest UKV, you can see that rain continuing in the east through this evening, slowly petering out overnight, and into tomorrow it's actually a lot drier. A few showers coming in from the east, and it will turn chillier as we do see colder air wrapping off the North Sea, but nothing too crazy. And you can see into Wednesday night, we actually see some rain spreading back in. A bit of snow perhaps on its leading edge, but for most, it's just area of light rain with some quite thick cloud into thursday that precipitation band moves through and it's actually a pretty dry day so the next couple of days does look like the drier slot is going to be coinciding with sort of peak hours of the day and then as we head into friday yes cloud is building in but this as the high pressure moves over as you can see the weather front is much further northwards because the high pressure is pushing all the lows back well to our north but as i said because the high pressure is not stationed right over the top of us allows lots of murk and rain to move out of the northern edge and you can see this into saturday with rain for scotland northern ireland northern england further southwards still with some thicker cloud around but perhaps some breaks in that cloud and you can see weather fronts trying to edge southwards but the high pressure holding it off and you can see that here 
at day five. The high pressure trying to hold it off, but it does look like the sort of dominant high pressure that was showing a couple of days ago isn't actually likely to hold on for too long. And the weather fronts are going to be moving back in by the early parts of next week. And then as said, more amplification in the jet stream, perhaps essentially even colder air masses moving in from the north or northwest as well. It is going to be an incredibly mild air mass, though, as the high pressure builds in later this week. Again, it won't reflect anything too crazy at the surface, but you can see around 10 to 12 degrees at 850 HPA, which is incredibly mild, well over 10 degrees above average, even nearing 15 degrees above average. Um, so incredibly mild, but not reflecting uh, that sort of level at the surface. Still probably going to be above average, but nowhere near that mild. If we do have a look at the two meters temperatures, you can see overnight tonight, uh, as I said, not dropping much below sort of five to eight degrees for many, maybe you frost across Scotland where it's slightly colder. Into tomorrow though, temperatures not rising all too much, about five to seven degrees as we've got that chillier air coming in off the North Sea, so back towards average, if not slightly below average for a time. But into Thursday, mild air moved back in, and you can see the early hours could be a bit of a frost before the mild air move. Air mass moves back in, and by Thursday, still cold in the east, 5 or 6 degrees, but further westwards, maybe nudging up towards 9 or 10. And then, as you can see, into Friday, perhaps getting an isolated frost in some southern and east areas, but for Friday afternoon, we're looking at sort of widely 6 to 9 degrees further eastwards. But for the far west, it's around 10 to 13 degrees, so really mild there and into the weekend i said it is a very mild air mass but you can see the temperatures only really get up to 10 to 12 degrees so yes probably about five degrees above average but nowhere near the 10 or 15 degrees above average we're seeing at the upper air levels and then into sunday you can see again seven or eight degrees interestingly though if you can just see in the bottom right of the screen you can see across northern france it's getting towards freezing, even though they're in a similar air mass. And that's because they're centred under uh, the middle of the high pressure and they're seeing the proper inversion take place. And this is why we've been sort of talking about that the last sort of couple of days, in the last week in general, because if this high pressure was slightly further northwards, then we'd likely see these colder conditions for England and Wales. But we're not seeing that here. And you can see here, even to Sunday afternoon, only three or four degrees. So it, it, it could have been really quite cold under this high pressure. But... It's not progressing anywhere near as northwards as we thought. So instead, it's going to be pretty mild, pretty gloomy uh, for many. But if we do have a look at the longer range now, as I said, it is really gearing up to be an interesting model watch into the lead up to Christmas. Again, I must emphasise, uh, because I don't want people to get carried away, there is looking like a relatively low chance it's going to be sustained proper cold spell in the next week or two in the lead up to Christmas. We can't say beyond Christmas and towards New Year, as that's outside of the model time frame at this stage. But from sort of now the 12th to about the 25th, 26th, it's not looking likely to have a sustained, proper, widespread cold spell. But colder snaps, colder incursions, and the possibility of wintriness cannot be ruled out, and actually does look quite likely in places. Now, if you progress through this latest GFS, you can see the high pressure building in, not really progressing too far northwards through the weekend before actually getting pushed away to our south by Monday and Tuesday. Now, this is where the models start to diverge a bit. The GFS here tries to build that Atlantic high, ridging it towards Greenland into the days leading up towards Christmas. It drops the tropospheric polar vortex in towards Scandinavia. And what this does is pushes a big area of bitterly cold air towards our side of the North Pole. And the UK would tap into some of this cold air into the days leading up to Christmas. You see initially a northwesterly wind, but veers more to a straight northerly by uh, the 23rd. And into the days leading up to Christmas, we've got proper cold air starting to establish itself over the top of us, minus five line moving in, and then low pressures developing within this. Again, for southern areas, because it's not a proper blocked, locked in cold spell, it is going to be incredibly marginal if this heat came off. But for northern areas, this is looking likely, if this happened, to be a proper snowmaker. And you can see where all the cold air is feeding off straight from the Arctic. The reason why it's not a you know widespread cold pattern is because we've not got this block further northwards. It's only a mid-Atlantic ridge, which means in the days following this, from Boxing Day onwards, it actually does veer to more of a westerly pattern. But we are looking very far in the future, so things can still change. But I'm just emphasising the consistency we're seeing now with this drop of the tropospheric polar vortex into Scandinavia and northern Europe, with the risk of pushing 
cold air our way. And we can see that really emphasised on the GFS ensembles at the end of the video, where not uh, where they're very much not in agreement about the time frame, the exact intensity of any cold, but they're all in agreement that there's going to be some cold heading our way at some point from around the 20th to the 25th. I just want to show you the precipitation charts from this, just to show you what, sort of, what, what we could see with this sort of pattern. Uh, so as we progress towards the Christmas period, generally you can see some wintriness arrives uh, with the wind veering in from the northwest, initially really only in the north, and you can see where the proper cold air is where we've got it. The majority of showers falling as snow, because it does make its way for northern areas, but for southern areas still very marginal, and into the lead up to Christmas, look at that. Heavy rain bumping into that cold air, seeing the risk of widespread, pretty heavy snow in places. And if we do dare to put the snow depth on, you can see uh, con some considerable snow depth appearing for the days leading up to Christmas and on Christmas Day itself. This would probably produce uh, a white Christmas for perhaps maybe 50% of the British Isles if this did come off. Again, unlikely to play out just like this, but just showing you that the risk is there. Even though there are people saying it's just a westerly fest, you can see how with a slight tilt in the jet stream, with that very cold air just to our north, it is possible to see some wintriness. And even quite a few models are going for it. And I said the ensembles are pretty on board with some colder Arctic air and wintriness potential heading our way. Now, if you compare to the GM, which has been a little bit pessimistic the last few days, but actually, it's fairly similar to the GFS tonight. We've got westerly winds all the way to around the 19th and 20th, but look at that, the winds tilt to a northwesterly direction with more of a mid-Atlantic ridge, and we see that drop of the tropospheric polar vortex in towards Scandinavia, and by day 10, we're in pretty cold north to northwesterly winds with the minus 5 line in. So it'd actually be more widespread cold than the GFS was showing, would only last maybe two or three days, though, I must say. You look out to the west, big or mild wedge of air developing within this low, that which would be heading our way. If you look at the jet stream, it's very strong. So that milder air out of the North Atlantic would be heading our way. But nevertheless, a few days of cold weather into the lead up to Christmas. And you never know, as the block is trending, this North Atlantic ridge is trending northwards. So you never know, it could edge northwards, hold on a bit longer. But the most important thing about this run is the consistency we're seeing between this and the GFS of that area, those dark purples, dark blues, heading towards Scandinavia, tracking a lot of cold air with it, allowing uh, on the backside of any lows with this mid-Atlantic ridge to tap into that Arctic air. Compared to the ECMWF, uh, again, high pressure trying to build in, does build in for a couple of days, but the westerlies push back in by Monday, and you can see actually towards day 10, it stays fairly westerly. Now perhaps right at day 10, we got these darker blues and purples heading towards Scandinavia, so it could follow on from the GFS and GM uh, in the days following this, but at this stage, it is uh, pretty much a westerly affair. Yes, there's probably going to be a polar maritime blast there coming in from the northwest, but again, nothing more than an, a day or so of colder than average temperatures before it turns milder again. So there is the risk there from the east and Perhaps uh, as it evolves, it could show something similar, but out of the time frame we've got, not showing anything remotely cold into the lead up to Christmas. If you do look at the uh, end of the video, if we do have a look at the ensembles, you can see what the latest GFS is showing. Got that big rise in temperatures later this week into the weekend with that high pressure building in. And then around the 19th, 20th, we see it plunge back towards average. And you see quite a few runs are average to below average into the days leading up to Christmas, perhaps even beyond that. There is a lot of scatter, I must emphasise that. Not all runs are going very cold, but there are lots of runs around that minus 5 to minus 10 region, especially in the few days leading up to Christmas, showing the possibility of at least a northerly snap or a, uh, an Arctic blast arriving where for a couple of days we see very cold air moving in. Uh, but again, we won't be able to pinpoint any details and see, we see some uh, proper consistency from these ensembles. You can see where most of the ensemble members go cold, the GFS operational run is pretty mild, and where the majority of runs trend back towards average, the GFS operational run goes very cold. So you can see there is very little agreement in the exact timings and intensities, but in the rough outlook of what could evolve, there is a moderate agreement here from the GFS ensembles. You can see why it could turn much colder, or you can see the evidence for it turning cold within the ensembles because the dew point is dropping in the longer term. Lots of runs with that dew point down towards freezing or lower than freezing, especially in the days leading up to Christmas, again, giving the risk of wintriness. 
If we have a look at the two metre temperatures, again, dropping in the lead up to Christmas. Again, nothing crazy, but looking at six or seven degrees, so average to below average. And then so there are some runs going very cold. Uh, again, anomalous at this stage. If we do compare to the ECM WF, uh, again, it's only just come out. And you can see, again, really no uh, consistency here from the, the Eastern WF. Um, oh, I wouldn't say consistency, but no agreement, really. A lot of scatter here. Perhaps around the 21st, 22nd, there's some agreement from the ensemble members for it to go uh, for to see a bit of a warmer sector. But then beyond that, actually, it's trending colder again. And there's quite a big cluster around that sort of zero to minus five region. Uh, again, unsure what to make of that because we are seeing a lot of chopping and changing. Um, uh, the GFS has a lot of scatter, but it had a slightly more uh, sort of distinct trends. Whereas here, we're just seeing a lot of uncertainty. Just showing you that, yeah, the ensembles don't really know exactly what is going to be happening into the beyond probably about the 20th of December. Again, as expected, eight-day lead time is generally where the uncertainty does kick in, but it is, uh, of course, going to be causing headaches, and of course, it's very difficult when you know, a lot of people want to know what it's going to be like over Christmas, and at this stage, it could be wintry, it could be wet and windy and stormy. Those sort of evolutions could come out of what we're seeing uh, in the longer term here and it's just going to be one of those we're going to have to wait and see how the models do evolve but there definitely has been a trend today for more atlantic amplification uh some of the weather patterns uh, long-term weather patterns have uh, latest updates have also trended slightly uh, more amplified or given evidence for more amplification in the jet stream so definitely is perhaps uh, more of a trend today towards the risk of cold weather but again, we will not know for certain and we won't be able to give any definitive answers until we start to see some proper consistency from the models, which hopefully will arrive at some point this week. You'd hope so, because by Sunday, you know, we're almost a week from Christmas. So you would expect to have a much better idea. And it is just going to be one of those we have to keep a very close eye on it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.